Hello Stoke community, welcome to another Starbase UGC video tutorial. I wanted to have kind of a back to basics tutorial because I know we're going to have a lot of new Foundry authors um, in a short period of time. So I wanted to go back and cover item placement. And I know if you've messed around with the Foundry at all, I'm sure you've gotten to the point where you've been ready to rip your hair out because of how annoying it is trying to put things in the map, to line things up, to constantly have to switch between the editor and the play map just to see how things show up. And I don't have any magic solutions to this. There are no, no big ideas that um, will help you through this. Hopefully at some point we'll get more of a three-dimensional editor and maybe we'll also get representations of details that aren't just green blocks that don't necessarily correspond to the actual size of the objects that would help but in the meantime I did want to share some tips and some tricks because I think a lot of Foundry authors discovered these tricks but we discovered them the hard way and if new Foundry authors know them to begin with they may save a lot of time they may prevent a lot of headaches so here's a tutorial on item placement now if you look at what I've done here so far you'll see a building block uh, building block platform 500 by 500 it's just a big gray slab you'll also notice some foundation walls that are 100 feet long and it looks like I've put four in I just put one here one here for the corner and two over here what I've actually done is I put those four in then I just threw in eight more and I didn't care where they where they ended up but I manually edited them so I put down my first block and then I got one of the random ones and just manually edited its coordinates to match. Now if you're not familiar with these coordinates you really need to understand how they work. In a nutshell the X coordinate is on the X axis. So if you move something this way it goes down the X axis. If you move something this way it goes up in value. The Z is going up to down. So if you move something in value up, its value goes up. If you move it down, its value goes down. The Y is the height of the object. So if you manually adjust the Y, you won't see any difference here on the map, but you will when you play test the map. That, that means the object will go down, either into the ground or up into the sky. Now, what I did was I put those first building blocks in place, then I put the others and I just manually adjusted them to match the coordinates of the first block. So I put in a block here, I put in a second one, and a third one. So there are three blocks here, right on top of each other, exact matches. Did the same thing for this corner, where there are three blocks with the exact same coordinates, and the other corners to match. The reason I did this was I wanted to show you just a real trick quick, or a real quick trick, excuse me, to lining things up, to putting walls on a map, and to m manually manipulating the X and the Z coordinates. If you tried to do what I was about to do using this drag and drop tool, it would not work. It would be a nightmare. One wall would stick out slightly more than the other, or you just couldn't get it right. But as long as you have three here, you know they're a hundred foot long, and you can see how long they are in the details. So it's 100 long, 20 wide, and 100 high. So if I know that there's a hundred long, hundred foot long wall here, and this building block platform is 300 wide, then all I need is three of these to fill in the wall. So I'll just take one of these, and because I want to go this way on the X, and I want to add the exact <coughs> length of the wall, I'll just add 100 to the X value. And that automatically puts a second wall perfectly lined up with the first wall. Now I have a third wall here, and I'll add 200 that perfectly lines it up. So each one of these walls 
have nearly seamless um, edges with each other. There are no gaps, no places for the player to walk through, and it was a very easy way just to create a straight line of objects. You could do this with lockers or other things, um, and you can do it with each side of the map. So here's another set of three, and oops, and I'm on the z-axis this time, right? And remember when you go up on the z, you go up in value. So if I take one of those and I increase the Z just by a hundred it goes up fills in that gap if I take the third one increase it by 200 it fills in that third gap now one note on these walls is there's some clipping in between the walls so if you're doing this with walls I would recommend not going a perfect 100 and going say 99.8 and that eliminates the clipping that's right in between those walls. But there you go, that's just a really easy way to line things up perfectly. It's putting in lots of objects, giving them the exact same coordinates and messing with the X or the Z just to either move them over here according to the dimensions of the object or up according to the other dimensions of the object. And that's, that's one tip. A uh, different way that you can use this, and I'm sorry for the very white interior here, I hope you can see this. What I have here is four tables all on top of each other. So I put in one table, I put it basically where I wanted it, then I threw in three other tables and I manually adjusted their X and Z coordinates to match. Now I don't need to drag them to where I want them. I can just play around with the X. So let's say that I want the tables to basically be one here, one here, one here, one here, and I want them all to just be perfectly matched up. So one thing I can do is with the second table, let's just let's go up on the Z and we'll go oh Let's try 400. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that was way too much. Okay, so let's try 350. Eh, that's not, that's still not good enough. Let's go down to 340. That's better, I think. But let me just be a perfectionist. I'll go 335. Yeah, that's about where I want it. So let's take a different one. We'll go up 335. And now it matches the other one. But I want it to be over here. So let's go this way on the X, which is going positive on the X. Let's go up to 95. Uh-oh. Oops. Uh, yeah, that's about, that's pretty good. And I'll do the same thing for the last table and just move it over 95. Okay, now what I have is, here is I have two tables perfectly lined up this way, two perfectly lined up this way, and it just creates a perfect square. And if you were to manually just put them in the map. That might work, but if you really want perfection, if you really want to line things up or make them adjacent to each other or create some type of symmetry, then don't even mess with dragging or putting things. Just mess with the X and the Z. And pay attention to the dimensions of the object. For example, I could put two tables side by side if I know that, well, the table is 15 wide, so let's just put the second table exactly 15 over and that makes them perfectly um, synced, makes them perfectly aligned with each other. Similarly, let's say you want to put something on top of the table. So let's look for the martini glass. Okay, there's the martini glass. It's a one by one by one dimension. So it's very small. But again, we know that the table, oops, 
And that's another trick is, or another point is to write these dimensions down because once you move to a different object, you have to research for the object in order to remember what the dimensions are. So it's 15 by 17 by 4, so it's 4 high. Theoretically, I could put the martini glass at a Y value of 4, and it should be right on top of the table. But as with other things in the foundry, that doesn't really work correctly. It seems that the um, Y height value of the table, it's either rounded up or it's just incorrect. So it's a good trick that if you want to put something on top of a table, just subtract 0.5 from the value that from the dimension that it thinks it has. So let's go back to the martini glass. And we'll just put it on top of the table. We'll change the dimensions of it to 3.5. And that should put it right on top of the table. Let's go a step further though, because we're we're dealing with um, details and when you start to put lots of details in the map you'll want to put other things on the table you'll want to put NPCs in the chairs of the table maybe you'll want to have a console nearby and you'll want an NPC to interact with that well there's another handy trick that I'll show you here so here we have the bridge of a galaxy map let's just play it And you'll notice in the preview screen of the map editor, lots of these details aren't there. I mean, you have a kind of a little shape for the captain's chair and a little shape for the console, but you don't. It, it's really hard to tell what is what in those preview pics. So how do you put NPCs where you want them without constantly shifting in between the map editor and the playtest? One trick that comes in a in much um, use is just to position yourself where you want your NPC. So uh, if the NPC is sitting in the chair, the feet will be, whoops, the feet will be about right there. Go to the chat and type slash LOC. That gives you the X coordinate the Y coordinate and the Z coordinate. Now on ground maps, this Y coordinate is, it, it just, it's unreliable. It, it, I don't know the explanation for it, but just don't trust the Y. Just think about the X and the Z. So you say, okay, I want, a bot, I want an NPC there. Write that number down. Then come over here and you say, well, I want to have a tactical officer that's interacting with this console. So hit it again. LOC, write that value down. And then when you go back into the map editor, you can assign those values to NPCs, and then they're much easier to tweak after that point. If you just start out guessing, then it's going to waste a lot of your time. This can also work with NPC or with uh, enemy groups. You know, you could say, well, I want one of the five to beam in here and another of the five to be strategically located here. In space maps, you can fly your ship to the spot where you want the satellite to be, and then you can use that command to give you an exact location of where you are in that map so that you can return to the editor and put the object in and manually edit the X, the Y, and the Z. From my experience, the Y is a lot more reliable in the space map than in the ground map. Okay, I think that's everything that's what I wanted to show you. Just a few basics about lining things up, saving yourself some time, getting comfortable with these coordinates, and knowing how to use them in conjunction with the dimensions of objects. 
I hope that's helpful. I especially hope that's helpful to people just starting to learn the Foundry. Um, please leave feedback in the forums and please leave requests for future tutorials. Thank you.